Let me tell you a story. I was working with a startup a few years ago. Um, they were in the huge scale up phase. They were tripling the size of their team every 18 months. They were, ex they were growing extraordinarily quickly. They just closed their Series A funding rounds. They were in a really good place. Everything the founders had wanted. Yet there were some struggles. There were some challenges that they were facing. The CTO, um, it was the end of a long weekend, three day weekend, CTO came back and he gathered the product team, the CEO, CPO, some of the product managers, some of the senior engineering team and said, hey, I've had a great weekend. I've built this fantastic new feature. I had this great idea on Friday. And I spent the weekend building it and creating it. Here it is. And he was fully expecting everybody to go, wow, great job, fantastic. But the room was just still, it wasn't, there wasn't, uh, enthusiasm for it. He'd introduced it, he'd showed it. The challenge was, and the thing was, is it wasn't, the idea was interesting, but it wasn't a great execution because, you know, the CTO had built it himself over the three days. There'd been no design input, there'd been a product management input, there'd been no tech input. And so everybody was a little bit annoyed at the fact that this didn't represent and match with anything that they'd be working on. It didn't represent their strategy, it didn't match anything on the roadmap, yet the CTO had created something, the founder CTO. And that puts everybody in a very difficult position because clearly they're the founder, this is a member of the C-suite, this is a very important person here, yet the team were extremely frustrated with this. And of course, so the CTO was very frustrated about this because he'd spent time working on this over the weekend. Now, I took the CTO to side and we went and had a coffee and I sort of talked him through it. And I said, well, you know, number one, why did you give up a long weekend to do this? You know, it was a three day weekend. He should have been spending time with his family. Yet he spent his whole time building this thing. They were three years into the startup journey they were on. They were used to working 60, 70 hours a week. He was struggling with not working 60, 70 hours a week. He knew he should. And when a large gap of time came, it was quite scary really to not be working because he'd spent so many so much of his previous time working all the time and so there's a little bit of worry for him around filling that time with something productive and that is fine early on in a startup that's the sort of thing that drives you that that hustle can give you some of an edge but that hustle is not sustainable it's not something you can carry on doing three four five years you're gonna burn out in terms of doing that and it was a real warning sign that you know, this CTO needed to look at their time and understand really what they could be doing outside of their business. But equally, it was a really frustrating time for the senior managers at this organization. They were really frustrated with the, with the founding team because the founding team still had their hands fully gripped on the wheel. They were still harding on the wheel like they were, like any good early stage founder should. They were completely across all aspects of the business. They knew exactly what was going on there. White knuckles on the steering wheel, keeping that car going in that right direction. And the reality is, is when you get to that phase of a business, you can't do that. You hire good people, as Steve Jobs famously said, for them to tell you what to do. You hire good people for them to take that pressure away from you, for them to take over, for them to have their hands on the wheel. So you can relax and enjoy a long, long weekend. That's why you hire them. That's what the interview process is focused on when you're working with them, yet to not give them that control is extremely frustrating for them. And then this incident of this fan, this, this uh, great new feature being introduced to everybody was, was, was really poorly received by everybody because again, it disempowered the team. The team had no idea what to do with this thing, okay? Didn't fit with any particular product manager. There was no design resource to figure, fix it. There was no roadmap, there was no customer support. There was nothing in place for this larger, much more successful business to support this new feature and idea. Two years ago, it would have been fine. Where they were right now, it actually caused more problems than it solved, having this great new idea, this great new thing. And the CTO, in thinking that he was helping and really supporting and driving that business, was doing the exact opposite. And now this is behaviour I see a lot from founding team when that point when they should be handing over the work to the team. OK, that's the difference between being a founder doer and a founder leader. Leaders don't do the work. The team do the work. You know that in your heart, but it's very hard to take your hands off the wheel, to not be on top of everything across the business and to trust that the team you've hired are doing that. It takes a lot for you to get to that point.